This is uh, a lot of history is made in this in this gym. Blood, sweat, everything. I love this place. You know, when you when you run a company and you're in charge of people all day, you need to get beat up at night. Helps keep your ego in check. Do you know that story of um, von Kleist about the man who had a fight with a bear? And the bear could read his thoughts so that the only way of hitting the bear was to do so not on purpose. Because the bear would know in advance. So it's the same in working with a Zen master. You have to do the genuine act, not on purpose. But since you are put in a situation where it's rather formal and you're supposed to do it on purpose, you're stuck, you see. So you explore the onion and you go in and in and in and then you find, well, uh, it's all a deception. Now then the question arises, who's deceiving who? Who's fooling who? of an entrepreneur you get to pick any 24 out of 24 hours that you want uh, my phone is never off uh, even when I'm on vacation I still am thinking about and running the businesses so it's a very important for me to to get out and exercise doing jujitsu running if I didn't do those things I'd fall apart at the seams uh, I never consider going and taking an hour jujitsu class or going for a run uh, a break from work. That's just part of my work. That helps me uh, keep it together. That helps my mind stay clear. It's my therapy. It's, it's for my health. Um, but the lessons that you learn on the mat are directly applicable to business. Let's talk about this guy. <laughs> talk about How this guy? How long we know each other? Oh, <laughs> goodness, man. Yeah. Ten on. years. Oh, man, yeah. It's been ten years, ten years at least. Um, yeah, man, Jordan came in here um, at our old location, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think, was I, I think I was a, I still was a, was a white belt. Yeah. I think I was still a white belt when yeah, you first you started came, right? Like and then, a year um, ahead of me. I was a little bit ahead of you, and then I think I just got promoted to blue. But, man, um, listen, uh, what else can I say? Jordan just always been around, just a good person, good friend. Um, you know, there's been times where he kind of, kind of was, you know, left a little bit. But the thing about martial arts, like my sensei Nardu always says, is when it, if you leave in good standing, you always come back. And Jordan has just been like the consummate martial artist, especially um, over the last seven years. Yeah. Right? You just consistency, consistency, consistency. That's like the. You know, I say one of the biggest pillars of martial arts, you know, yeah. you know, staying consistent. Professor Akbar and I started training together. When I started, he was already uh, up and running about 10 years ago. He's an uh, amazing guy, great friend, and amazing Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitor. This is the old yeah. dojo. You yeah, see that room? Location. Yeah, so... Um, this is this that's, is how we that's, started. That's humble, we started. Humble, humble, humble beginnings. Everybody. Yeah, much, much. I mean, not even a third of the size yeah. of the place we're in now. One bathroom. One bathroom. Just a room and a mat. End of the day. End of the day. So, what do you typically do after this? <sighs> Drive home to my baby and my wife. It's the best part of the day. Just a simple 45-minute drive back to the city if there's no traffic, and then do it all again tomorrow. New York traffic always like this? It's not every day, but it's, that's part of the mind fuck. You just never know. One day, you just, you wake, it doesn't matter if it's 6 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., for any and no reason, there could be traffic in New York. But uh, tonight, we're driving into this insane storm. Oh my god. Here we go.
the day. Who is this little bugger? This is Axel. He's 10 months old. When we first met, I believe in morning rituals and I feel like it's something that is so important in life. But I also think that it's important to have balance. So back in the day before we had Axel, every morning, Jordan and I would wake up and we would do our morning routine, which would include running, then we'd go get juices and like, it was the best, it was my favorite part of the day. And then when Axel came around, we learned that we had to be flexible, which is important in life. And we'd want to spend time with him. So in the mornings, I always, you know, Jordan's always hanging out with Axel. I try to hang out with Axel because a lot of times we get home so late that if we don't spend the mornings with him, we often don't get to see him. So I think it's something to be important or to like focus on in life is balance. And realizing that some days you might not be able to do go on your run, but you'll make time for it in the, in the afternoon or you'll do it at another point in the day. But as long as you get it done, that's all that matters. Here, watch, you wanna see how fast he's gonna be? We're gonna create a sprinter. Watch, go Axel, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> the first Halloween, Axel was only a month old last October and he got him a karate outfit with a black belt, and uh, we carried him around New York, trick-or-treating in that. That and skiing, those are the two things. He also bought him his first skis when he was born. I just remember being single, and I lived in this apartment, in this building, one bedroom, and I came home and was by myself every day. And you blink, and now I have a whole family here, and it's, it's just, you can't describe the feeling, it's amazing. It really makes it all worth it. And I have the most incredible wife in the world. She, you know, I always thought that I worked hard. And I, and I do think that I work hard for a business person. But when you see somebody going through, you know, we met when she was in medical school. And, uh, and now she's about to finish up her third year as a, a resident surgeon, chief resident surgeon at Lenox Hill Hospital. I mean, it makes what, what I do look like a joke, you know. So she pushes me so hard to, to be better and do better and work harder. Uh, because she's helping people all day, every day, getting called in at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, after working 15 hours. So being a humble businessman is, it's nothing in comparison, nothing. Other than this city, yeah. like what are, what are some of your favorite parts of the country? Uh, I love Miami. I love going to Miami. I go to Miami in the winter. I love Colorado. I'm a big skier, so I ski in uh, mostly in Colorado and Vermont. I love Vermont. Um, I go to Texas a lot for business. I have a, a massive amount of respect for people from Texas. I do a lot of business on the Texas-Mexico border. For all the bad press that the border gets. I mean, some of the best people I know live on the Mexico-Texas border of Mexican descent, of, of American descent, and uh, I love visiting Texas. So, pretty... Uh, it's not New York, though. There's no place like New York. You know, it's crazy, like, you think about what it does, what, you know, what it takes to live in New York, what it takes to live in New York City, and then you think about places like Mexico, like Mexico, Texas, Thailand, Costa Rica. You could retire right now. Move to one of these places, live on a beach, never look back. Why do you just, why do you stay on this grind in New York? It's crazy. It's good. So you can have your entire MMA career and never worry about CTE. You can just swing for the fences, <laughs> like, right? Like yeah. Lamas and Max Holloway did. You yeah. just stand in the middle of the octagon, swing, no worries. And just bang. Yeah. But then, if you did that, then what about like Parkinson's or anything like that? Would that still be a thing? Or I mean, if that wasn't a thing, then I'd be all for it. But also, oddly enough, I think that part of what makes 
MMA is so exciting is that there are crazy consequences. You know what? I gotta actually do something. Real life. Being in the real estate business. Joe Rogan said the best thing about family businesses. He said, you know, you think about a, a kid that grows up in a family business and they join the family business and they, you think that that kid's going to be a loser. You think that kid's going to have everything handed to him. And Rogan said, well, you better not underestimate that kid because sometimes they come from a great man and great men, they're extra hard on their kids and they teach them things that other people aren't privy to that information. And so I know a hundred rich kids that have fucked up everything that they've ever had, thrown it away. Uh, having money, having a family business, having success, that's no indication of if you're going to be successful. But if you are blessed enough to have you know, a family that has a business or just even somebody that has a, has a great job or a great education and you get to learn from that person, such a privilege. Well, you know, it's uh, Jordan came out of college, a uh, business degree, had, you know, was ready to go and use all that talent and skills that he learned. And uh, the world was upset and upside down after the, that great recession. And uh, 23 years old, and like many young guys, they're ready to start their own business. So, with the assistance and influence from our IT. Uh, director who was working at the company as a consultant, uh, they decided to start an ink and toner business. It was our first foray into e-commerce. Uh, Mixology wasn't really even off the ground yet. And we had an IT guy who said, you know what you need to do in a recession? A recession-proof business. Everybody needs to buy ink and toner. So we set out to build this ink and toner business. And uh, our IT guy at the time said that he was an expert in building websites. In 2008, there were no, Shopify wasn't around, Big Commerce wasn't around, Magento was in its infancy, so it was really hard to build a website. You still needed to code the whole thing from scratch. And uh, he said, yeah, six weeks we'll have a web website. Six weeks we'll have a website. Six weeks turned into 12 weeks. 12 weeks turned into 24 weeks. After a year and a half, we still weren't in business. We didn't, need a we didn't even have a website. So we didn't even get to that first point. So after about six months, my dad looks at me and he says, you don't need a website to sell toner. So here I am at a college with a degree, going around calling everybody I know, trying to sell ink and toner door to door. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, they presented a plan. We went forward with it. I backed them all the way. And uh, because I do believe in that, I do believe that you, know, you back young, bright people and you give them a chance to uh, build something and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes you learn more from the ones that don't. I ended up selling close to a million dollars worth of toner. <laughs> and I was so burnt out on the toner business. We finally broke our partnership with our IT guy and we had invested in, in the very first Mixology, it was one single store. Um, and my business partner came to me and he said, hey, you, you built this web business, you know how to build it and the tone business was, was going away. It was just the website never took off and I was so burnt out selling door to door. Uh, my brother was interning for me that summer. He went to GW University and in six weeks we built shopmixology.com and the rest is history. Uh, when you think about going into business, uh, most people dream. They think about what is the product? Why are people gonna love this product so much? And they say, I use it, it's gotta be a great product. That's fine. You can have a great product. You can even have a great service. It's all about the execution. It's all about how you do it. So the book tells you the things you got to be thinking about other than your product. Jordan, my man, what's going on? How are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? I'm sitting here with Will Harris. Will, how are you, sir? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? Man, I am always excellent. You know my routine. If you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground, you better be excellent. Exactly. Listen, I really, really appreciate you calling me, JT. Oh, for sure, man. I, I'm, I'm out at a conference, and, and they told me you were, you were trying to track me down, so I've stepped out for a bit and, and, and figured I'd make this call. Yeah, I don't need much of your time. I just, I'm here shooting this documentary to, to talk to uh, the world about our book, 
This Is It, that Scribe Media helped us write. And I just wanted to show my appreciation. I know we, we uh, chatted on LinkedIn a few days ago. Uh, you have an unbelievable company that embodies everything that we're trying to put out there in our book. So just wanted to get you on the phone for just a minute and pick your brain and say what up. So our book is a lot of stories and successes and failures. Um, it's, you know, to take good advice, but in the end of the book, we have an appendix with like actionable items, the things that people really want to know. And uh, being in the real estate business, I have my landlord hat and then being an operator, I have my business operator hat. And I speak to business, you know, small business owners all the time and, and they get burned with these leases and they have these landlords that lock them into these impossible contracts. So this is just an article that was adapted from the book that helps people, you know, point out the few things that they should look for when, when writing a commercial lease because you don't have the same protections in a commercial transaction you do as when you sign a residential lease. Uh, I saw these kids desperate. What do you do now? So I started writing a blog and I was writing a blog to Jordan, his friends, and uh, anybody that wanted to read it. And the blog was an inspirational blog. It was about uh, telling these kids the core values they needed to be successful in business, to be optimistic, to have the best work ethic. And that blog became an everyday blog. And f at first, just a few people were going on the Glenn Edwards dot wordpress.com. And by the time that I stopped writing it about a year and a half later, uh, maybe 150, 200 blogs that I'd written, uh, there were about a thousand people on the blogs. Everywhere I went, people were telling me how inspirational it was to them. Their parents were telling me, my children read it, and I said, uh, you know, I'm so happy because the reason I wrote it was to help kids get a start. And this is like before blogging was, I would say, commonly known. Uh, Glenn Edwards blog .wordpress com, And he wrote this blog every single day about hope, enthusiasm, and it was to just to speak to my friends, you know. It was to show them that you know this is cyclical. It's happened before. To keep a positive attitude and just keep driving forward. And he wrote that blog, and the the world got better. And at some point, he stopped writing it. Uh, three years ago, I happened to come across it on my browser, and I said, and I said, oh yeah, yeah, my dad wrote that blog. That was awesome. And when I, when I thought back on it, I said, how much could he have actually written? And it turned out that he had been writing for three years, three years worth of content. So I downloaded that whole entire blog and I turned it into this coffee table book for him. And I presented it to him as a gift and I was like, Dad, you know, this book means so much. I went back and I read your entries uh, all these years later and it still is relevant. And it's really good stuff. I think that like you should consider writing a book. I said, Jordan, I'm not writing a book. Nobody writes a book. And he's like, I have absolutely no interest in writing a book. I'm not an author. I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm working in business. Now we're busy again. He's joined me. Mixology's growing. We bought another six or seven real estate assets during the last year or two. And we're cooking along. And Jordan says, Dad, I'm going to turn this blog into a book for you. I said, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. And all of a sudden, about a month later, he comes to visit me in Florida, and he brings me a bound copy of all my blogs, and it turned into a book for that family that we can enjoy in our family. It wasn't a book. And out of that blog, he says, you got to write a book. you got to come up with something. So that's how I wrote the book, Coming Into Your Own. It was based on all those blogs, all that hopelessness and helplessness that, guess what, all those young men and women turned into successful business people. He succumbed to my pressure. I kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. And I, I found this incredible company called Scribe Media who helps entrepreneurs, athletes, celebrities gather their thoughts and, uh, and help them through the publishing process, through the writing process. And uh, he wrote this book, Coming Into Your Own, which was about the morals and mindsets of, of future business leaders. To me, and said, some people said, what would you consider yourself success? Is it selling a thousand copies, selling a million copies? No, my idea of success was I got emails from people that said, I got up this morning and I thought about you, Glenn. I said, I'm going to go to work and work harder than anybody else. Another person wrote me an email and said, I'm going to be the most ethical person in my office. Another person wrote me an email, 
two years after I wrote the book, and they said, you know what, I just quit my job. The company that I was working for was doing everything the wrong way. I just knew it wasn't the right place to be. And I remember for your book, you said, don't do that. Don't get involved in a company that represents the wrong issues. So I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I tell people all the time, read what I write. If you don't like what I read, write, use it as a baseline. Do the exact opposite. But at least you're giving you something to consider. What's the benefits of breaking up your day uh, with the class and being able to just go back to work after, you know, taking the class in the morning? You know, I just, it's part of my day. It's, it's good for my mental health. It's good, good for my business. You know, I love getting into the office early. Uh, bang out all the work I have to do before my phone starts ringing, the emails start going, and then going to do an hour of jujitsu on my lunch break. It's like I used to stress out about that, but now it's just you know the best part of the day. Uh, it keeps me sharp in the afternoon, and uh, and then if for some reason I have some work obligation that takes me out of the class at night, I know that at least I got my training in for that day. So the balance is, is something I talk about all the time. Balance is so key, you know. In, in my business meetings, I talk about it as a pendulum. Uh, sometimes I use uh, dieting and eating as an example. You don't want to be a glutton, and you don't want to be anorexic. You want to hit that sweet spot right in the middle with a well-balanced diet. And that goes for everything. That goes for, for my life. That goes for my business. That goes for my jiu-jitsu training. Uh, everything has diminishing returns done to the extreme. But if you never get your ass up in the first place and start, um, you never get stuck. So balance is so critical. You know, you have uh, you have a business, and the best example I could think of this is Jocko Willing, the Navy SEAL. He wrote this book, Extreme Ownership. And it's all about the extreme aspect of, of ownership and taking ownership over everything in your life, everything, your whole team. Your team makes a mistake, it's your fault. I so believe that. And then he, he had a follow-up book called The Dichotomy of Leadership. And in the book he talks about his fans writing into him and said, I'm taking extreme ownership, I'm doing everything you told me. I'm taking the most extreme ownership and I'm still not having success. And he said, well, that's the dichotomy. That's the balance. You're too far over here on the right. You don't want to be over here and you don't want to be over here. You want to go right down the middle. So balance in business and life in jiu-jitsu is, is everything. Of course. I, can, I can't say enough incredible things about Matt Cully. Not only is he one of the co-owners of our gym, an incredible black belt martial artist, but amazing businessman, multi-dimensional. You're a manager of UFC, PFL, tons of fighters. You're the CEO and owner of Rise, a professional grappling organization. You're one of the head honchos at Ring of Combat now. Yeah. You're involved in Ring of Combat, commentator. And uh, you know, early in my jiu-jitsu career, coming up through Blue Belt, I fell off a few times. I was building my business. I was in my mid to late 20s. And I didn't know it at the time, but I had the insane fear of coming back after being off for a couple months. And two pivotal times in my life, Matt called me, and if it wasn't for him, I might not even be here. He's a, uh, a very disciplined and uh, driven person, which can uh, be a great attribute to, to bring to the mats. Uh, like he said, we all have things in life that can take us away from training. Um, but when you create a family atmosphere like we have here at Budokan Martial Arts, um, the door is always open, welcoming to bring you back onto the mats. And, um, not everyone has the, uh, the courage to come back always though, once they leave. Jordan did, he came back and uh, he's now excelled to purple belt. He's gaining traction on getting near a brown belt. And um, he's a big factor in us continuing to grow the family atmosphere and spread martial arts here in, in Limbrook. So after a, a mini day of workout, yep. it's back to the office. Back to, straight back to the office. No time to uh, mess around. Hour, hour and 15 minutes on the mat, quick shower. And uh, inbox full of emails and a 
phone full of voicemails. But uh, that's what it's all about. Just every day. Same thing. I love it. I mean, I'm so grateful I get to do this every day. Like, it's a choice. I choose to do this, you know. I, some people, they don't work out, they don't exercise, they don't work hard, and those always seem to be the people that never have enough time for anything. You realize, like, the least successful people are the busiest? They're too busy to, to get out of their own way? I just, I just don't understand it. I think my wife said it this morning. Everybody in the world has the same 24 hours in the day, and you get to choose what you do with it. The three of us on the same side of the... You want to, yeah. you want to put this on film? <laughs> what is the occasion? Let me just get to the beginning. So the occasion is the uh, business was started 10 years ago. Uh, I funded uh, a, a concept store called Mixology. It was an offshoot of a, a company that my daughter worked for uh, since she was 13 years old called Beautiful Girl. Uh, Beautiful Girl unfortunately didn't make it through the last uh, great recession that we were speaking about before. The credit lines were pulled, people stopped shopping, a whole bunch of things happened. They couldn't support the business any longer. So the uh, fellow who owned the business came to me and asked for uh, an investment in this new concept. He said it wasn't that people stopped shopping, they stopped shopping for more expensive luxury goods and they were shopping for better value. So out of that came an industry called fast fashion, which was less expensive goods that gave you the same look. And you combined your, shoe, your good shoes, your good pocketbook with everyday fashion. So that's how he called, came up with the name Mixology. You mix your good with uh, moderately priced fashion conscious clothing. Uh, and the reason we got there was because my daughter, Gabby, uh, worked for them since she's 13 years old. In a year or two, she was coming out of college. It was around 2008, I guess, 2009. You graduated in 2009, 2012? Whatever year, I lose track of the years. Anyway, so she was coming out. I invested in the business, figured it was a place that she can go to. Well, roll the clocks forward. Uh, we went from that one little store that's no longer around, but that's another story for another day. Uh, today we have 10 stores. We have a very uh, robust... Uh, web business uh, and omni-channel uh, business that we're servicing customers in every state in the country and a few countries outside of the United States. Uh, and today, uh, as of yesterday, our partners, we bought them out and now the business is 100% Edwards owned and we're very proud of that and we wish our former partners very well on the next journey. They have plans also. Hey. <laughs> All right. What do you have to say? Very excited. <laughs> His take on the world right now is there's never been a better time to start a business. This is a, a historic time where there's never been this much divisiveness. There's the Trump presidency, gun control, people not sure how to feel about their, if they're a male or a female, but Despite all what you read on the news, my dad is the eternal optimist and thought there's still never been a better time to start a business. There's still never been a, a better time for progress. So that was the, the essence of this book that we just wrote together called This Is It. And it tells the, a very candid and real story of our successes and our, our failures. And we've had some, some serious failures on our way up to the top. You know, we're part of this generation. I'm lucky enough to work with my children. My daughter's 30 now. Uh, when she came to work with us full time, it was the day she left college at 23. Jordan was already in the business and working. And I got to see young people uh, in difficult times, in challenging industries. Everybody would say, why are you in retail? Brick and mortar retail is dead. If you're not on the internet, you, you shouldn't even open. I see vacancies on stores all across America. and. That's the opposite of my belief. My, op my belief is if you run a business super well, you can compete. And if you compete, you're gonna be successful on some level. My, my story is just being written. He's been to the mountaintop on many, many business ventures and investments. And uh, I'm 34 years old, I'm running two companies. And this book, This Is It, is about my journey over these past 10 years and how you take a business from basically nothing and you nurture it and you get it to that, that medium size. So I got to watch my kids starting this business and working hard in this business. 
And then the economy started to improve. And all of a sudden, there was capital available where there once wasn't capital. The only place that Mixology can open a business when we opened Mixology was from, uh, from my personal investment. We couldn't go to a bank. There were very few people lending money at the time. And the banks after the last crisis had such tough restrictions that they weren't lending to anybody except high credit, low risk uh, investments. And as the economy improved and the cost of capital came down, I said, you know what, this is going to be a time for business creation like we've never seen before. And all these young people with fertile minds and lots of energy and see the world differently than their parents or their grandparents sort are going to have this wide open landscape to start businesses. And I said, Jordan, there's going to be millions of new businesses started. Let's write a book to help these young people or older people start a business. Tell them things that we've done. It's just been such an amazing journey. And, and uh, working with my dad every day, when I, someone asked me, how long did it take you to write that book? And I looked back on it and I thought, oh, maybe seven, eight months. The whole process took like almost a year and a half. And it was just so, every week working with my dad and uh, you know, coming up with the content, coming up with the stories, coming up with the lessons, it's just something I'll never forget. I believe that business is about to take off and I think we see it happening every single day. There's a new great idea coming to place. Uh, there's disruptor companies. Uh, just a few years ago, Uber was not Uber. Uh, Grubhub was not Grubhub. Casper Mattress was not Casper Mattress. And the list goes on and on and on. All these businesses that didn't exist that you thought you couldn't compete against Sealy Mattresses. You couldn't compete against the local delivery guy. You couldn't compete against uh, the taxi cabs. And all of a sudden these businesses emerge. And these young, fertile minds see the world differently. They see, all they see is opportunity. And that's what got me so excited about writing the book. This is it. If you want to see amazing customer service if you're in business. Uh, my publisher sent us this frame cover of our book with the publication date that just coincidentally was on my birthday. And this is what it's all about in business. I mean, you have to blow your customer socks off. And my publisher, they treated us like we were the only customer in the world. And they're working with the biggest and the best, including David Goggins. So uh, just an amazing, amazing experience. Being in business is not just having a good product. It's essential. You might, you might not have a business if you don't have a good product or good service. But if you don't do all the right things, the ABCs about being in business, you won't. So uh, in the book, Jordan talks about his training and about uh, the first day that he started to run, how difficult it was. A lot of similarities to running a business. It's really hard those first few days. It's when you're done with that first few days, you're sore. You're you don't feel like you want to get up again in the morning to do it all over again. But guess what? If you're inspired, if you love what you're doing, the next day you get up, you work a little harder, and it gets a little easier. Not easier to sell, not easier to get customers, not easy, but it just gets easier to keep trying hard and doing all the right things. Then if you have good practices, if you don't start off wrong. You never have to look backwards. If you start off right, you could look the next person in the eye, the customer in the eye, the employee in the eye and say, I know I do this the right way. I do it for the right reasons. It's not just about making money. It's about bringing a service the right way to a customer and they get the benefit from it. And if you do those things, you're gonna be successful in business. Uh, gosh. You could spend years and years learning to do things the right way and the wrong way. Spend them doing the right way.